What's up guys? I have a quick Final Cut Pro tutorial for you today. I'm going to show you how to create an impact shake effect like this. The impact shake effect is a really easy effect to do and it just adds that extra little something to your edits. Let's get into it. If you saw my monogram creative console video recently, then you would have seen this impact shake effect in action there as each of the modules snap together. It's a fun effect to incorporate into your videos and I'm going to give you four tips on how to make it look really cool. Starting with this shot of this guy punching a punching bag. The first step is to find the impact point and where you want the shake to start. Then hit M to make a marker. We'll be creating keyframes and moving the position of the clip. When you do that, you'll get these black edges on the edge of the frame, so you'll need to scale the clip up in order to cover those edges. I always start by scaling the clip because then I know how much room I have. Let's set the scale on this clip to 110%. I'll also set the viewer to 50% so that I have room around the frame. I'll activate the on-screen transform controls by clicking over here, and now I can easily see the edges of my frame. Next, you'll use the left arrow to go back one frame and set a position keyframe. This is your normal position. Then go one frame forward using the right arrow key and adjust the position to create a new keyframe. Two quick tips here for best results. Number one, make the first keyframe movement in the opposite direction to the movement on the screen. This makes the impact seem bigger than it is. In this example, this guy's fist moves up and to the left. So you'll want to move the clip down and to the right. For some reason, Final Cut Pro makes keyframes on these other properties as well. This is not a big deal if you aren't changing any of these properties, but you can avoid that by just adjusting the position property in the inspector window instead. Tip number two, the first keyframe should have the biggest movement, which again helps to emphasize the impact and the keyframes that follow will be slightly smaller as we return to the normal position. So I'll hit the right arrow to move one frame forward and I'll move the position of the clip until the edge of the clip is almost on the edge of the frame. I'll move forward again and reposition the clip in a random direction making sure it's a slightly smaller movement than before. I'll do this for four or five keyframes, and then on the last keyframe, I'll reset my X and Y values to zero so that the clip returns to its normal state. I'll hit done in my viewer window, and I'll play that back. It looks great, but one other thing you can do to make the shake look a little more natural, and this is tip number three, is to add some motion blur. I've got this Moderate Motion Blur 2 effect from Ryan Nangle, which is free. It's actually one of my top 10 favorite free plugins, which I made a video about. I'll leave a link to that down below if you haven't already seen it, and I'll leave a direct link to the plugin as well. I'll drop that onto my footage, and I only want to cover the section where the shake is. I'll select the clip and hit Ctrl V to show my keyframes, and I'll just retime this Motion Blur layer to fit. When I play this back, pay attention to how much smoother the shake looks. Tip number four is to add sound effects. Adding an impact sound really sells that shake effect. And if you're using music, you can even time that impact to the beat of the music to emphasize the shake even further. If you feel like you've learned something or you've enjoyed this video so far, please take a quick second to like this video. I would really appreciate it. Also, I have a really exciting giveaway planned for next week, so make sure you subscribe and that you've hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on that. Let's look at another quick example where we keyframe the scale, like in this example with the blacksmith. First, I'll use my left and right arrow keys to search for the impact point, and then I'll create a marker. I'll go one frame back and add a position keyframe. I'll move forward quickly, adding keyframes and moving the clip as I go to create this impact shake effect. And then I'll set the clip back to zero. I can remove the keyframes that Final Cut Pro created for rotation, scale, and anchor point. I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the clip using the up arrow, and I'll set a keyframe for the scale at 100%. I'll move to the end of my clip and set the scale to 110%. I'll go back to my keyframes and make sure that there are no black edges that appear. If there are, I can either reposition the keyframes or increase the scale at the end of the clip. I'll add some motion blur again to smooth out the shake that I've created for this impact, and I'll retime it to fit my keyframes. Here is the final impact shake effect for this shot. 
Like I said, the impact shake effect is super easy to pull off in Final Cut Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you did, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.